family was not talking about our Jewish roots. When I finished my studies in Poland and I started preaching ministry, pastor, my grandmother died. So from Warsaw, I went south part of Poland where she died to hospital. And I went together with my uncle. And the uh, doctor gave for my uncle and for us uh, the purse that my grandmother was carrying with her every day. <laughs> Something like every lady carries with her every day. So my uncle just uh, reviewing, checking what she carries in her purse. And then he located a picture. And picture was uh, River Jordan. Hmm. This picture was taken 17 years earlier. I'm saying to my uncle, uncle. Why? Grandmother, for the last 17 years, she was carrying this picture every day with her. And uncle starts to cry then. And he told me, we are Jewish. <laughs> it was the first time I heard it. My grandmother earlier was an Orthodox Jewish girl. In the year 1920 it was, they were leaving what is now Ukraine, in a village. She was working in her garden, and one man was passing by, her name was Haika. He told her, Haika, Messiah you are waiting for, he came already. <laughs> it is Yeshua. Man. And he went by. <laughs> but then, at this moment, grandmother stopped working. She looked up in the sky and started talking with God, saying, God, you have seen this man. You heard what he just told me. He told me that Yeshua is Messiah. Please tell me if this is true. <coughs> And at this moment, God has touched her with her spirit, with His spirit. Hmm. Grandmother never before experienced anything like this. She couldn't understand this. But one thing she was convinced: that Jesus is the Messiah. Later, her husband became a believer. Later, many Jewish people in this village, it was <coughs> far from Anatevka. <laughs> and uh, grandmother, uh, with grandfather, they had uh, 12 children. <laughs> and one of them is my mother, still living. <laughs> then, of course, Second World War started. <laughs> Germans were looking for Jewish people. Uh, <laughs> And each one of our family, I mean child, children, 12, were kept uh, kind of hiding in a different Christian family in the village. And all of them were spared, their life was spared. Today our extended family counts about 100 people. Wow. And among this family, 16 of us are preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, from one Jewish girl that loved Jesus, God multiplied I still, at that time, continued working as a pastor. And as Brother Kaji mentioned, as he came to visit us, he encouraged me to work among the remnants of Jewish people in Poland. I remember later, I was praying one day, saying, God, 
You know what is in my heart. I would like to know what is in your heart. Dear ones, sometimes it is good to know what God is dreaming, thinking about us. What keeps him happy and what makes him sad. I said, God, I want to know. I remember I was reading Romans, letters to Romans. 10th chapter, first verse. Apostle Paul is telling my prayers and desires in my heart are for salvation of Jewish people. And I said, God, if it is your desire for me, I want to do this. And this was my beginning. I told my wife, Dorothy, our life or ministry is going to change now. <laughs> so she asked, so who you will be now? <laughs> and what I'll be doing? Then I went to the elders of the church that I was working with. I asked them, let me go now to work with my Jewish brothers. So they asked, are you going to leave us, going to Israel, to Russia or to America? <laughs> At that time in Poland or in Warsaw, there were no Jewish sections of the city. I even didn't know if there still are Jewish people living there. Before the war, in Warsaw, there were three and a half million. Yes, in Poland, three and a half million Jewish people living in Poland. In Warsaw, around 400,000 Jewish people. Many synagogues, schools, hospitals, theaters, cinemas. After war, not. Six million Jewish people in Poland and in Europe perished. I didn't know if I would go someplace. But I know what I want to do, what, I, what God wants me to do. So, we start then with my wife in apartment where we live to conduct Shabbat meetings in our home. I remember. And in our first Shabbat, Dorothy, myself, and our three daughters, we invited one older lady, Jewish lady from Warsaw Jewish Theater. She came and she told us, never since the end of Second World War I attended Shabbat meeting. She asked me, can I invite for next Shabbat one of my friends? <laughs> of course, let him come. And uh, she brought a man. This was a man who still lives, and he was a president of the Jewish veterans that participate in the Second World War. So he came, and he presented, he wrote a list, piece of paper, and on this list, there were 1,500 names, addresses and telephones, there were still some Jewish people living at that time that were participating in the Polish army during the Second World War. Can you understand this? Day earlier, I didn't know if any Jewish people left. And next day, I had a list of 1,500 names. He asked, can, can you take care? Can you work with these people? Mm -hmm. So this was my beginning. I'm working with them. <laughs> it was uh, much uh, humanitarian aid. They need some medicine. Uh, much of help. Uh, today from this group left uh, 300 people. 
In three or four years, none of them will be left. But I thank God that for many of them, with many of them, I was able to pray and help them. Then God opened doors for us to work in Russia, in Ukraine, in Belarus. We start to invite some children of Jewish families for vacation to Poland. And over these last 20 years, over a thousand children, Jewish children, came to Poland. And 1,000 of singles, Holocaust survivors. And during the last three years, such groups are, were bringing them from Israel, coming to Poland for so called vacation with Bible. Children, adults. And the last two years, we are bringing from Israel Jewish soldiers for vacation to Bible to Poland. Just one word. Why I start doing conducting this service? Just a few words and finished. I had one friend, Honeshmer was his name. He was a professor of Yiddish literature. He was teaching in Harvard, in Oxford, in Jerusalem, and in Warsaw. I think that at that time it was still in the 90s, I think. He was probably the only one of the professor of Yiddish literature. He was already retired. At that time he was 76. He went to Israel, to Jerusalem, and there he had a hard home. And he was writing a book. <coughs> but there he became ill with cancer. He knew that he was dying. And he told to his wife, I want to die in Warsaw. Mm. He told for 600 years preceding my family members were living and dying in Warsaw. I want to be buried there also. I met them at the airport in Warsaw. He was so weak, we had to go immediately to hospital. And in the hospital I was visiting him every day. We were praying together. And I was asking, you pray to Messiah. He wasn't ready till now. He was praying to Yiddish Psalms. But then he became so weak that wife took him home. Being at home, he lost his conscience. For one week, he was without conscience. I remember it was a Sunday. On this particular Sunday, I was conducting at the table the communion, Lord's Supper. And at once, he must have woken up from his subconscious. And the first thing he spoke to his wife, Give me this Jesus. Oh. <laughs> I immediately called uh, my wife Dorothy. <laughs> and Dorothy wrote me just a little piece of paper with this message. <laughs> I left the church, the Polish church, and I went immediately to them, to him. <laughs> we talked, we prayed. <laughs> it was Sunday. And on this Sunday, this day, I had the children from St. Petersburg, Russia, at our Bible camp in Poland. <laughs> and I said to in city Ostruda, northeast Poland, we have now Jewish children who came for vacation to Bible in Poland. I have to go now to them, but I will come back to you on Thursday. 
Saúl mit hír, tehát if not hír, who will there? And then he started to cry. And I was sad that I even said this way to him. He looked at me and he told like this, Kajik, I do not cry because I am dying. I know where I am going. But he said something like this. I he never heard thought that I will live to such a day, to see such a day, that to Poland Jewish children will be brought or will be coming for some other purpose than to be killed there. This was the trauma that followed him from the Second World War. To Poland during the Holocaust days, from all the Europe, were brought one and a half million of Jewish children, and they were burned in crematories. And he told me, I thought I will never live to be in such a day. And I said, Pony, as long as I will be living, Jewish children will be coming here to Poland to rest and to learn. And each year we continue, we are doing this. Because I recognize how important it is for Jewish families. The Holocaust was happening in the center of so-called Christian Europe. It was not some place on the edges of the world. So now I want to, 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 to this place that this will become the place that the camps of life, new life. And God is opening more and more. I'm happy that you are meeting here. That you praise God. That here Jewish people are be believing in Jesus. Because today this is most what they need. To return to their land and to their God. Amen. To their Messiah.